Hey guys, Firefox Man here, back again to preach to you about the good news of the gecko. Firefox has a lot of customizability, especially when it comes to configuring all of those settings inside of Firefox. And they offer you all sorts of great benefits like protecting your privacy, security, and the occasional weird Mozilla feature. If you're looking to configure Firefox, but you don't want to deal with the fuss of having a custom user.js file, this is the place for you. Firefox has a lot of settings, and these are only the ones that are available in the graphical user interface, or the settings menu. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend setting up custom profiles in Firefox. I actually maintain around four Firefox profiles, and each one of them serves a different purpose. I typically name this profile that I'm going to be covering today Privacy Fox, but you can name it whatever you want. Because what we're going to do is we're going to configure Firefox to a minimum degree because scripts like custom user.js files often turn off a lot of features. And while features may break websites, and typically they honestly don't, but there are some settings deep underneath the hood which cause websites to break. And by keeping Firefox down to the bare minimum, you can use Firefox in such a way where you can guarantee that there is no breakage. And even if you're an advanced user and you use privacy hardened Firefox with a custom Arkinfox user.js file and a new and fancy user chrome.css, you need to be aware that the GUI settings in scripts like Arkinfox by default will not configure these things for you. In fact, they will often leave these unconfigured so that you can go into the settings menu and change these to your liking. And that's the point. The point of all of this is that you get the ability to customize Firefox the way you want, and you choose how you want Firefox to look. We're going to roll through some of the default Firefox settings, and I'm going to give you a quick one down of each one. Now, the first thing that I think should be very obvious to people, the moment you go to the hamburger menu and open the settings, is changing your homepage. You can type in a URL and change the homepage to something else, and you're like, why are you covering this? This is so basic, because I think some people could really take advantage of this. If you're a, a normal user, you can actually use this as a launching point. So let's say you always go to like open your email or like because you use web email. You can set it so that it opens your email by default. If you're an advanced user, you can even write your own HTML launcher file, which you can use and have Firefox open by default. And for the last time, Josiah, I am not making your homepage Google because you can just type in the new tab page or the search bar to use Google. <laughs> Great. Speaking of Google, let's talk about the search settings. The search settings are where you can configure Firefox's default search engine. And I would be remiss not to tell you that Firefox gets paid millions, heck, probably almost billions of dollars by Google to be the default search engine of their browser. But that might be changing because there's rumors of a very hidden bidding war between whether or not Bing is going to replace Google as the default search engine. And if you have a preference about a different search engine, you know, like say you value your privacy or you're going to be a weirdo who uses Brave Search, you can change it here. Alternatively, if your search engine isn't listed, you can visit your favorite search engine. And if you right click on the address bar, you can add it to your settings. As an aside, one of the things that I do is I disable search engine suggestions. Firefox will proactively search with autocomplete enabled by default. And that means anything that you type into the URL bar, whether it be normal websites you visit or even queries that you intend to go to your search engine provider, no matter what you type in, will be sent to your search engine provider. And if you like me and you're not comfortable with this, I would strongly recommend turning this off. And I know you don't get the autocomplete, but if you wanted the autocomplete, just visit the website. It's not that difficult. Or you can just leave it on and just ignore everything I'm saying. The other thing that I do is I enable Firefox's enhanced tracking protection. And this is actually something that's enabled out of the default, and it definitely won't protect you from everything. But the point of enhanced tracking protection is it's designed not to negatively impact your browsing at all, even if you turn it up to the strict mode. And that's my recommendation. If you go into enhanced tracking protection, turn on the strict mode, you can have the guarantee that even if you don't use a content blocker, 
you can still use the strict mode and block some really basic tracking around the web. In America, us Firefox users are pestered with sponsored links in the autocomplete. Now, if it were up to me, I would just turn the whole thing off. I am not going to be clicking on your stupid sponsored links, Mozilla. <laughs> The other thing you can configure while we're here is configuring the way Firefox behaves with cookies. Cookies are used to track things across the web, and usually it's innocent stuff like, say, login sessions or local site data, especially if you use something like a web app, or even just cache information so that you can load a web page faster. However, most websites abuse this and often use cookies as a mean to track you. Now, this is going away soon because of the way Google is starting to handle tracking on the web and standards they're trying to set for handling tracking on the web. But of course, this brings the question of you, what do we do to block this kinds of tracking? And it's actually pretty easy. If you go into cookies and site data, check the box which says delete cookies and site data when Firefox is closed. But if you're deleting all of your cookies and site data, how are you going to stay logged into the accounts that you use? Especially if you want the convenience of staying signed into accounts that you access through your browser very frequently. Well, that's actually really easy. If you go to manage exceptions in the same menu, you can type in the sites that you want to add or copy paste sites if you want to add. But alternatively, if you visit the site that you want to add as an exception, if you do control I on Windows and Linux or command I on Mac, you can go to the permissions box then go scroll down to set cookies and click allow. That way you can always delete the cookies that you aren't using, but keep the cookies that you want. That way you as the end user get full control over what kinds of cookies you want to allow and it also helps keep your computer nice and tidy. And speaking of the website settings, let's get into one of the most important ones. HTTPS everywhere. Back in ye olden days, pre-2013, websites thought that it was a great idea to use unencrypted websites. And unencrypted websites allow your internet service provider to snoop on everything you do on a website. Whereas when you use HTTPS, they're only able to see what type of website that you're visiting. Now, thankfully, most HTTP websites have basically been eradicated from the public internet, all thanks to things like, for example, Google and Bing will delist or derank websites that use HTTP. But there is still a small minority of people who couldn't figure out how to do it properly or get a certificate at all through something like Let's Encrypt. And you want to be presented with a full screen warning every time you visit a website like this. That way you as the end user know that when you're visiting one of these websites, it's not secure. And you can also whitelist websites if you happen to have any local web pages on your own network that are not signed at all. Or if you have just the one stupid website that you visit to read like books from the 1990s or whatever, you can get access to that here. Now, one of the last things we also, I also want to talk about is DNS over HTTPS. Now, I'm not going to get too much into detail, but DNS over HTTPS is one of the newest web standards for secure DNS connections. And DNS translates URLs, like say, trafoton.com, to the corresponding servers on the internet and their IP addresses. DNS over HTTPS changes the DNS paradigm by using HTTPS packets to call websites that you visit instead of traditional DNS over TLS. And when you use DNS over HTTPS, especially in conjunction with an encrypted DNS provider, you know, a good DNS provider that supports DNSSEC, maybe they support blocking things like malicious websites, uh, they have great logging practices. Your internet service provider can still sort see the websites you visit, but they aren't allowed to tamper with any of the content. Because yes, we know that internet service providers like Nokia and Comcast have done this before. And I have previously enabled by default in my own user.js file that I've issued out to people in the past, the US default of Cloudflare's DNS over HTTPS server. But in this scenario, I'm taking the step back and allowing you guys to decide what you want because a common request that I've gotten is I would prefer to use Cloud9 instead of Cloudflare's DNS. I think that Cloudflare's a great default and there's also the default of next DNS, but if you'd like to change this to something else, you absolutely can. Just don't use OpenDNS. I don't think Cisco needs that stuff in our lives. 
Lastly, Firefox now has the ability to force all traffic through DNS over HTTPS, which is actually really cool and something that's unique to Firefox. In Chrome and previously Firefox, DNS over HTTPS would be the default, especially if websites rejected it because websites were able to identify whether or not their users are using DNS over HTTPS. And if they rejected it, it would often fall back to normal DNS, which by default is probably the DNS of your internet service provider, unless you took specific measures on your router or on your device. And if you select max protection or increased protection, if you can't connect to your DNS over HTTPS provider, or if your connection is routed back, you'll get a full screen warning prompting you whether or not you want to continue with out DNS over HTTPS. And this is actually one of the things that's new with Firefox and something that I consider pretty cool. And of course, we have the spiciest meatball of them all, telemetry. <laughs> While Firefox is fairly respectful of your rights, one of the things that I am most suspicious of is their telemetry collection. The telemetry being opt out isn't so much of a crime, but they don't make it clear whether or not this information is useful to them or not, nor is it published anywhere for you to actually view. And it also doesn't help that Mozilla places sponsored crap all over their browser, and even if you believe if Mozilla is within their right to do so, which they, they are, it's their browser, I'm a paranoid weirdo who would turn it off anyway. If you use an account too, if you use, let's say, a Mozilla account, Firefox account, Mozilla will collect more information about you and have diagnostic information that's directly tied to your Firefox account. So because your Firefox account or demand an email out of you, you probably have some more reason than one to turn off any of the given diagnostic information if you're not comfortable with that sort of thing. And now let's get to one of the most hidden features of Firefox, customizing the UI of Firefox to your liking. For example, by default, Firefox uses a wide address bar, very similar to what you'll see in Chromium-based browsers by default or in Safari. But if you don't like the wide address bar and you want to maximize the space on the top of your bar, you can actually just remove the little spaces at the top. If you're someone who does a lot of front-end development, or let's say you do a lot of uh, website work, you can actually add the developer tools from Firefox to the top bar as a little wrench icon. So that way you have quick access to various things like the eyedropper tool or the responsive design mode. And if you also are tired of having the puzzle piece, it's very similar to Chrome, you can go into the puzzle piece and pin your extension icons back up to the top, especially if you click on them very often. Let's say you have like your vertical tabs or the, the most popular Firefox extension which starts with the letter U and you click on it very often, you can always have them there. And you can use this to be creative and make Firefox your own. You can make it look like Chrome, old school Firefox or Opera, Heck, you can even make it look like Safari, and that's one of the coolest things about Firefox. There's a built-in, supported way to customize the browser. But even if you use the vanilla new tab page, which most of you probably are, there's still actually a few things you can do. You can first go in and unpin all the sponsored garbage that's pre-installed by default and uncheck the boxes from the gear that say sponsored shortcuts. Mozilla, stop it. I hate it. Great, thank you. The other thing you can do is you can also add rows to your bar. So for example, if you're someone like me, you probably use something like the Brave browser, maybe you use Microsoft Edge or Chrome, you'll see that there's all sorts of little boxes, but they don't seem to make use of all of the screen real estate that's on there. If you want to go and add another row to your bar of your new tab page, you can. Heck, you can even add four bars and really have it maximize the use of the space. And this is one of the things that, you know, might seem really minor, but it's actually something that I consider really cool about Firefox. And these are just some of the things that you can do with Firefox. And even if you're the, the diehard user, yes, we'll get to you guys soon. Uh, this is actually one of the awesome things about Firefox. You can go in and change all of these settings, and they're all settings that are available to you. And you can customize the way your browser looks and some of the behavior of your browser so that you can truly go and make Firefox your own. So why don't you go leave a like on this video. <laughs> leave a like on this video if you can't stand all the sponsored garbage that's on Firefox. Alright, 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your week.